Hi, Young. Hi there, everybody. Um, thank you for joining us. Hi. Hi. We are the three Black Brad grads. Uh, we thank you for checking into this episode. This is our 92nd conversation. Uh, just talking photography. Yeah, 92 of these things. I, wow. Can't wait for 100. Uh, my name is Kenneth Nelson. I'm here with my good friends uh, in conversation, uh, Mark Skinner and Greg Claythorne. Uh, we're all graduates of the uh, Fine Art Photography Program at Pratt Institute in Brooklyn, USA, and we all have decades of uh, commercial experience out there in the photography world. Every week or so, we get together and we chit chat about what we love most, or one of the things we love most, photography. So this is our 90 second conversation, and and I'm 90 second conversation, and I have the chosen topic of conversation. You've been this one. <laughs> okay, and so. Uh, I decided to play word association, and word association today is the word discombobulate. Word of the day. Uh, so I've decided, yes, uh, this is a word that I've had in my uh, lexicon library for decades, and I've never had a chance to use it in any real conversation, so I decided to put it out there. Uh, to cause it to be in... like a bucket list item, Ken. <laughs> Uh, it's to cause it to be in a state of confusion, upset, or uh, disoriented. Like, like, uh, like when you have concussion protocol? <laughs> no. No? Okay. No. Okay. Of course, I could have chosen um, another word that would mean the same thing. Uh, but where would the fun in that be, right? <laughs> I like flummoxed. Okay, so in order to keep this episode as short as possible, uh, I begin exploring, um, let's begin exploring uh, the images that we think exemplifies discombobulation. And the person who's doing that first is Greg. And so Greg has decided to uh, submit a, uh, a uh, well, let's just leave it where it is. And Greg, which one? Ooh, Greg, I, oh, there, there it is. Okay, so here we go, Greg, this is Greg's. Yeah, I think that one kind of speaks for itself. You know, the, the one world is right side up, the other world is upside down. And what's upside down, what's right side up, you know, it's kind of relative. And we were just talking about Star Trek. So <laughs> there you have it. Um, but, you know, in, the, in another way, uh, photographically speaking, you know, um, I cannot remember the name. We had an instructor. Uh, back at Pratt, and um, he's a well-known photographer, and I, uh, I'm so remiss, I apologize, I don't remember his name, but uh, I used to always sign my name upside down, you know, and uh, he came over to me, you know, after attendance and everything, and he's like, you do that because that's the way the lens sees it, right? I was like, what? You know, but yeah, you know, I mean, photographically, you know, uh, our brains flip everything upside down so that we can, uh, you know, interpret it. And uh, I just kind of get a kick out of, um, you know, the the abstract quality of photography. You know, it's it it's uh, super real. You know, it captures everything in uh, heightened um, detail and uh, color or black and white. I mean, but but a three dimensional world flattened into a two dimensional world. And if you're you know inside the camera, the image is flipped upside down. So it's uh, kind of abstract and. In a way, it kind of, for me, it kind of uh, typified um, discombobulation, but, you know, making sense of things, you know. Um, I always thought it was kind of philosophically, oh boy, here we go. Um, <laughs> the way, uh, you know, we can, if we are shown something nonsensical long enough, um, our, you know, for our mental <laughs> health, we kind of make sense out of it. So um, I wanted to display that, uh, demonstrate that, um, in this uh, short video of uh, seeing and, you know, just, just questioning what you see. And, uh, um, you know, that, that's how I saw this little uh, short clip. Um, you know, so when, next, when, you, sorry, when you bring in the, the video content yeah. and then you incorporate yourself within the, the, the conversation yeah. and you display a certain set of emotions surrounding 
the discombobulation. Mm -hmm. What is someone supposed to interpret from your reaction to what um, you're seeing? Is are you looking for approval, or you what are you looking for when you present this look on your face when you say when you see that? Um. Well, it's kind of like, jeez. Uh, um. What could I say? Well, I like uh, like when you wake up in the morning, you know, before your uh. Where you know your makeup team, uh, you know, gets to beat your face or trim your beard or you know, uh, you don't look the same, you know. Or I, you've done that. I know I've done that. You know, you're in the mall or whatever, and uh, you're you know just kind of bopping along, having a good time, and you pass a mirror, and you know you're only half looking, and then you stop and back up. It's like, was I looking through a glass? Who is that? Oh, and then you're like, oh, you feel stupid. Oh, that's me. You know. Um, just uh, seeing yourself in a different way and then, uh, you know, being used to seeing yourself a certain way when you see yourself out of character or upside down or, you know, the way uh, things are right now with, uh, you know, God bless those folks in Ukraine. May they stay strong and beat the Ruskies. Um, you know, there, there's just a, a, a battle, a constant battle of, um, you know, just trying to make sense of the world that you're in right now. And, um, you know, well, I mean, for especially for this one, for me, it, it reminded me when you said discombobulated, it made me think of, uh, you know, um, when you, you know, get a really, really good sleep on and you wake up in the morning and you're lying there kind of looking up at the ceiling and, and you're really not registering, you know, <laughs> or you've been on a long plane flight or something or you're here in a hotel, you're relaxing. And you wake up and, you know, before your brain reboots, you're like, uh, oh, my gosh, where am I? Well, what is that? Oh, where, you know, and then you, you got to give yourself a chance to catch up with where you are. And uh, then you're like, oh, OK. All right. This is down. This is up. This is east and west. All right. I'm, I'm at what city am I? Am I in? You know, I have to look out the window. So, but um, Greg, Greg, yeah. I guess what I'm really I guess let me ask it another way. Sure. You've incorporated a sort of a social media construct to the video. Okay. Was that intentional? Yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I wanted to, uh, you know, so, social media is, it's so big. I mean, I don't even have to say that. Um, you know, the just uh, folks from all over the world just challenging the frame, challenging uh, what you see. And there's some talented people out there who have who've done some you know just straight straight you know theatrical acting and there are some extremely talented folks that can do uh, some electronic wizardry and uh, it really makes you question what it is that you're seeing and uh, how you fit in that world you know because you look at it it's like oh I can do that until you try to do it then it's a, you know there are technical things that go into it so um, it's just a, a different way of seeing things, you know, and uh, seeing yourself and then on a on a screen is, you know, the thing to do. Well, it's but interesting. Then, is, I'm sorry. Then well, seeing yourself in that screen, but upside down, it's like right. It's, it's, it's inverted. Right. So you you made a specific choice to go to that particular screen to, uh, to illustrate the uh, discombobulation. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Right, but not only to experience it, but then to incorporate the sharing of it, which yeah. is the second aspect of it. Right. Which, when you decide to share it, given this aspect ratio in space, you're now giving less real estate to the actual discombobulation and half of it to your interpretation of the discombobulation. Right. Because you're now including the social media aspect of it, which includes yourself. Because, I mean, uh, I, you don't see, you know, I mean, I, I you know, deaths grow <laughs> more than I care to tell about it. But, you know, you don't, when you see somebody in a screen or a mirror or with, you know, they're never, you know, it's straightforward. They're there, they're in the mirror, that's them, they're cut and dry, period. You know, but I, uh, you know, I, I want to question that. I mean, especially in social media, because there's a, a whole, oh my gosh, now with all of this disinformation and, uh, questions about what's real and what's not you know, fake news or you know no that really happened uh you know just uh, questioning what you see is is kind of important for me 
Okay. All right. Mark, any more questions? Any questions for you? No. Okay. Uh, okay. I guess uh, we can either skip ahead or we'll go to the next one and then I'll, I'll just make it quick and uh, we can move on. Uh, the next one, what? Uh, did I get did, you, did I get the horse? Did I send the horse? No. No, you did no, not. Don't worry about it. Yeah, then I'm good. That's that's what I that good. Of course, you've done it again with discombobulation. How do you? That's like uh, uh, music. Uh, take a picture of music. Oh, okay, but music is all right. Never mind. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good, good, good call. My thanks for this. Go ahead. Okay, that's Mark. You're next. Yep. Discombobulate. Okay, in uh, this one image that I have, I don't have a second image, I decided to illustrate discombobulation. It's confused, puzzled. And so what I did is I did a self-portrait. I mean, we did self-portraits self in the previous episode. So I continued that uh, with a uh, proper discombobulated self-portrait of me. You know, <laughs> uh, that was really it. So I wanted to illustrate that, uh, that feeling of uh, confusion that people have when they're sometimes talking to someone else and they're not quite sure what's happening, or even if the other person's really talking to them or they're talking to someone else, there are a variety of scenarios in which uh, confusion uh, can lead one to, you know, to create an expression, something like that, and, and point a different direction from wh where they're looking. That, that, that looks like the expression on that guy um, who was harassing Mike Tyson, and he punched him out. <laughs> But I guess I guess he was pretty discombobulated after that. <laughs> it's uh. He looked I, awful. I, I, I was yeah. like, yeah, okay, dummy, you just got punched out by Mike Tyson. Yeah, I, I can understand that. That's definitely well. That's probably the that's probably concussion. How, how did you come across getting the right facial expression with, with the word discombobulate or what was your what how did you go about it and and how many uh, images did you uh, test to come up with this interpretation I, I of discombobulate? about maybe 10 images uh, first thing I did was I looked in my bathroom mirror and I made confused faces some of them just looked angry some of them looked angry and worried some of them just frightened and so uh, I had to really think about the sample questions like I had sp said earlier, uh, you know, how I really feel and how I feel my face, how I feel my face mm -hmm. actually towards when I'm in uh, those situations. And so uh, it, it took a little while to kind of get, you know, how I feel and what, what I look like. But between uh, really trying to experience those feelings and looking in the mirror, I, I feel like I was able to get a variety of, of looks that I thought were suitable to photograph. I photographed about five or six mm -hmm. images, then I uh, photographed another five or six, and then mm -hmm. I selected from those and and, and uh, lightened up a little bit of the, the shadows mm -hmm. and uh, added a border and cropped them, of course, because that was it. And that was okay. it. And in, 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 your, in your estimation, um, how close are you to exemplifying the word discombobulate in, within your image and of yourself? I, I think, you, know, you mean on a scale of 1 to 5, 1 to 10? Oh, and percentage points, 100% being you got it, you knocked it out of the park. You know? I, I, you know, I, I think in, in, in terms of illustrating the state of discombobulation, I would say... I would say 90%. I'd say the last 10%, if, you re if I really wanted to be true to the, my sense of the word, mm -hmm. uh, in more than puzzlement, it, it would require uh, a lot more disheveling than I'm there. I mean, I haven't shaven in a while. I obviously have a haircut. You know, there are a lot of things going on that exemplify discombobulation. Mm -hmm. But perhaps instead of wearing a sweatshirt, which is kind of typical of that, perhaps I would have a, a misbuttoned collared shirt like this, but it would be misbuttoned. So just completely wrecked. So I think that last 10% in the styling, uh, okay. you know, it set up mm -hmm. a few lights to do this, so it was okay. And it, was, it was fun. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think I replicated daylight. Inter well. Interesting interpretation. I, 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 I like the fact that the, both of you come up with... Uh, uh, yourself within the, uh, the within the context of of the word, so it's kind of interesting. 
No. Mm. As as a, I guess uh, what I what I guess is I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, move on to me, and of course I am one of those who would hardly ever place myself in a selfie <laughs> to exemplify the word. <laughs> <laughs> so uh you're thank you guys for, for well, doing that because I, I, I didn't want to subject anyone else to that so i <laughs> i volunteered for that particular okay. so my interpretation of discombobulation is usually if i guess if you were to when you, you know, let's take a, a scary movie you've not seen a scary movie and then you know you're Wait, going so to the movie scary movie or any scary movie any okay. scary movie or any horror movie and you don't know what's going to happen Right. So as as the scenes develop, you're 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 confused. You don't you don't know what's going to happen. Uh, you're discombobulated because you, you have no certainty. Right. You're, you're disoriented. You don't know which way you're going to be turned into. It, it might be left. It might be right. It might be upside down. Who knows? And then at some point in time, it's resolved. All right. For the most part, it can be resolved. And so the discombobulation has its curve, which means that it has a buildup. It has a realization and it has a, uh, a sort of a conclusion. Uh, and so that's where I want to take you in terms of the photographs that I selected. I've, I brought two photographs to illustrate. And I want to take you, when you first see this image, you, you think about what I just said and you just, you know, take a look at this image and let me know if that's how you feel because. Mm -hmm. Do because I feel discombobulated? Uh, no, I do not feel discombobulated. Well, again, it's it's a curve. So it's first you realize what it is. You you you're looking at something. The the second you look at it, you're really not sure what you're looking at. Then you come to the realization what you're looking at, and that's when you everything is resolved. Yeah, and that could be a split second. That moment of uh, uncertainty when you're when yeah. you're trying to figure out what it is. You're right. If, if You're I trying to say, figure up, down, left, right, positive, say, negative space. Yeah. If I if I couldn't identify that door on the right, yes. Yes. then then I would have been. I would have taken a lot longer yes. to. Uh, yes. Because like, what am I looking at here? Yes. I see lines. I see shadows. I. Yes. But then I saw the door and I locked in. Yes. And I then everything else made sense. I right. intentionally ah. did that. I intentionally I mean, did me, that to, to me, make it, it easier. To me, it looks like, you know, and, I, and I don't know where we are here, but to me, it looks like under the bleachers or or, uh, or the back, like Shea Stadium or something like uh, that. Oh, that's the that's the elevated train, so is it, or is that a fence? No, that's good. That we're even <laughs> asking. It's like, well, where is this? Yeah. You know? Yeah, you're you're asking where is it? What is it? Right. right. You still don't know. Right. You just know it's light and shadow, and okay. you know there's a door. So right, and so that that's the discombobulation that I like. You 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 you're disoriented. You're not sure which way is up. Then you you ground yourself with the door. Now I shot three versions of this photograph, one without the door, but I figured that the one without the door was a little too complex, and it w it would just you know not be easy to solve. And so I left the door in on the second version. And Greg, yeah, what's up? Yeah, yeah, I raised my hand. I don't, I don't, why would you, because yeah, you even said that, just like, why would you make it easier? Why not let the person, you know, hang out there in the abyss for a while? Why? why because it, there's no guarantee that would hours. that they would ever get it. So? Without me saying so. So? Right? In this particular instance, you have something to ground you in reality. Mm, I, I think I would have, well, for me personally, I'm going to say. For this, and again, this Greg, for this practice here, yeah. I decided to use this version. Right. Now, if we were to go out, and, if I were to go out and print this and use this elsewhere, I'd have to make the determination as to which one I would use at that moment when the exhibit happens, if there, if the exhibit happens. Okay. I kind of, I kind of like, I kind of like the uh, the uncertainty without the door. You know, it's like I would really have to really look and you know find something else. That that. That kind of made it too easy. Like you, you, you left. No, you, know, you didn't I, leave a breadcrumb. You left a freaking whole loaf. You're, you're, <laughs> you guys are both visually acute. Mm -hmm. I, I have to give you some, you know, graciousness for that. But I don't think everyone else would solve it or see it as that simple or s solve it that easy. How do you I know? So. You, you made it too easy for them. I don't yeah. think so. No? Well, yeah. Why'd no, you put a door? So. Everybody knows what a door is. 
Yes, but again, you still don't know what this is attached to. So those questions are still, you're still trying to come to terms with where it is and what it is. I don't know. You spe- you say to us in many of these episodes that one cannot get into the mind of the viewer. You're stating that you are feeling that the viewer is going to say cer- feel certain ways. Well, so- yeah, because you're guiding them. You can guide them. The question is, well, what's the chances if you guide them, what are the chances that they'll get it? And what are the chances that they won't? Right. If you're if you're anywhere in a city and you don't understand what a door is, then you'll get this. <laughs> I, you know, these are if you, if you, fairly sharply delineated shadows. I think I think if the tonalities are right and there's information in the shadow, you don't need the door. I think people can read into it. I agree with Greg a little bit on that. Okay. All right. Let's. I brought a second one just to demonstrate discombobulation. All mm-hmm. right. Like okay. It. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, and here's the second one. Ooh. <laughs> Kaleidoscopic. No, it's mm-hmm. the difference between the red pill or the blue pill. <laughs> so, w- right. So, I presented you with something, and... Are you questioning whether it's real or not? What are you seeing real? You know? I think I think today, reading this, one cannot tell unless they're familiar with how this image was produced. Okay. I believe in the past, one would be able to tell a little bit more easily. Okay. I, I like the idea, you know, the duality of, you know, where we are today, you know, um, where people, you know, experience the same things, see the same things, and mm-hmm. come up with, you know, diametrically opposite opinion on what, what's actually happening here. Right. You know, but so I, it's, go, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no, just, just, uh, just the duality of uh, of our reality, you know. You could you could see one thing and say it's this, or you know, look at it again and say, oh no, that's this, you know. So I, I get a kick out of that aspect of it. Mm-hmm. I, I think the real beauty of this photograph is that it is a feast for the eyes uh, to see so much information that is both familiar and new on two sides of the frame. And I, I think it's. I think it's. Yeah. So there's a, there, there is a sense of discombobulation you feel, disorientation. Absolutely. Yeah. Did Did, did you guys see that movie Inception? Yes, I did. The Leo. Yeah. I, oh. That That movie it was just so mind bending. You know, it's it like what, which is real, which is you know, and you're like try to. Do that thing where it's like, okay, we've erased. There's five more things on this image than there are on that. What's what's different? And I'm like, wait, whoa, whoa, hold on. I saw yeah. Doctor Strange. That was similar. <laughs> I did not see Inception. Was I understand? So yeah, trip. watch it. Yeah, get that. It's a it's a really good movie on a lot of you know it get it kind of loses itself near the ending in the denouement, but um, it's a good movie. But this one, it, I mean, it's it's like. Um, this is this is a uh, this is an actual mirror, yes, Ken, or reflection. I'm not. You don't have to tell me. I'm yes. not giving away anything about the image. Okay, you just so take the I image just, as I, if it discombobulates you or not, or disorients you. That's the intent. Well, it, it does, but then I noticed on the uh, the image on the left has more color definition than the one on the right. I'm not sure if that was intentional or that's just the way it was captured, but. There's certain light intensity that's uh, diminished and color saturation that's different between the two sides. And it almost makes it uh, dreamlike, which is what I what I enjoy about it. Right. But in but while we are hearing this, one could not one could not tell based on everything that is possible in the photographic sphere. If this were 1958. It would be fairly obvious for us to say, oh, this is one side and this is the other as photographers. But now, not that Ken would do this, there could be some retouching or some filtration 
on either side so that we are led to believe that one side is real and the other side is not. So there are so many variables today that the only thing that's discombobulating about this for me, I find it fascinating, I think it's a wonderful picture, but it does play with the knowledge of the viewer. Yes. Yeah. I like the way it compresses space. It's just, it's just something that you wouldn't normally see in nature or in the real world now. Right. right. But <laughs> and, and seriously, and you know, like it, it keeps bouncing back to red pill and blue pill. You know, it's like just let me step through the mirror and see what life is like on that side. It, yeah. I, I'm enjoying it. I like it. A lot. The one thing you can take away from this image, from my perspective, is that what you are seeing is 100% real. Okay? There is no special effects, right? It is 100% real, depending on whether you're looking at one side or the other. Both sides are real. Mm. All right? So, well, even I mean, if it was fake, it would still be real, but a different kind of real. Ex ex right, but yes, yes. Just <laughs> like, just like when you look at yourself taking uh, sh shaving in the morning, when you're looking at yourself uh, shaving, and, and yeah, you you that person shaving is real. <laughs> that person is you. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> it's, it's just ex just a slightly expanded world. That's all. Oh, that just dropped something. But very cool, very cool image. Right. So, guys, um, we're we're running out of space and time. Uh, so, any closing remarks uh, regarding uh, discombobulation or uh, word usage in terms of um, matching words with images? All right, George, you've done it again, Mr. Nelson. <laughs> I'm confused. <laughs> I think I, I think. It's cool. It's good to be confused. <laughs> you know, as, as long as you can rationalize the confusion and come out on the top, you're good. Yeah, that's like he's wait. So you're playing the role of a, what do they call that tribal? There's always a uh, uh, like a foil character. What do they call them? Um, oh my gosh! Oh, they they make you challenge the values of the clan. Uh, oh my gosh! I can't remember. It'll, it'll come. It'll. I'll probably remember next week. <laughs> Isn't that the uh, antagonist? No, that's in no, the, no, no, theatrical that's... writing. No, it, no, you know, like in a group of people, there's always somebody, uh, or in a village. Well, that's, that's the seen... first. That's the first challenge, right? That 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 prompts the prompts the protagonist on their journey. What? Never mind. Oh, the. Uh... Oh my gosh, what is it? Um, like in a village of people. It's there's, there's the challenge, the, uh, right? What? The challenge. Yeah, they know, they, but they challenge, the, they intentionally behave contrary to the social norm to, to test you to see if you're going to do the right thing. I forget what they call that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. All right, moving right along. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, guys, we're going to close it out now. Um, we want to thank you, um, viewers out there, for joining us for this episode uh, called Discombobulate. Uh, thank you for joining us. If you have any questions, let's go again. Episode 91. 92. Wow. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for joining us. If you have any questions, please leave a comment in the comment section below. Uh, subscribe and ring the bell uh, to, let us, to let you know uh, when our next episode is uploaded. My name is Kenneth Nelson. I'm here with Greg Cleghorn, Mark Skinner. We are three Black Pride grads, and we'll see you on the next episode uh, shortly. Thanks again. Bye-bye.